Integrating Breathwork into Psychotherapy. Hello, I'm Jim Morningstar. As a clinical psychologist who has been integrating breathwork into psychotherapy B6, I've encountered many and varied lessons along the way. Breathwork has enhanced my practice immeasurably because it gives me the tools to work from a whole person perspective rather than just a verbal approach. I've been able to assist clients in coming to integration in their body, mind, and spirit more effectively and have given my clients self-regulatory tools to sustain an integrative life and grow on their own more effectively. I do not use formal breathwork techniques with every client, but sitting in a room together in any therapeutic setting, the helper and client are each inhaling and exhaling one million particles with every breath and sharing their co-created atmosphere on a molecular level. As research has shown, they are also transmitting radiant frequencies from their heart and brain centers that overlap and interact on an energetic level. Nonverbally, they are communicating a myriad of signals through body posture and movement that they instinctively interpret and react to. Verbally, they convey information about their history, behaviors, beliefs, expectations, and aspirations that influence one another. Their contractual agreement is for the therapist to assist the client in increasing his or her functionality and satisfaction. Now, with all these levels of interaction, what does the therapist focus on? And how does the therapist intervene in the most useful ways? I believe the breath holds an obvious and overlooked key that is literally right under our noses. In any helping interaction, a rapport has to be established for a useful contract to be established and results achieved. Breath awareness has been an instantaneous indication for me as to the level of safety and comfort a client has in their body and the environment they share with me. My breathing and body posture shifts with the meeting of any new person. Now, this is something that happens with all of us. If I am conscious of my interaction, I can immediately begin putting myself and the other person at ease and establishing rapport. If I unconsciously mimic or amplify the fear they are signaling, putting myself and the client in a defensive posture, I have set up impediments to our rapport from the start. Awareness of my breathing as a caregiver is a key to my effectiveness in communicating with my client. Usually, within the first hour I'm with clients, I ask them to report what they notice about their breathing. This takes some care in phrasing so that the client doesn't take my prompt as a criticism. I begin the teaching of breath awareness as a self-regulatory biofeedback mechanism at the onset. Now, this helps clients to become aware not only while they're breathing with me, but also in their lives, of when they start to constrict their breathing. They begin to see how this breath holding is most often associated with a fear reaction, conscious or unconscious. This awareness is then coupled with the skill of altering their breathing to produce more resourcefulness in any situation. This is usually as simple as breathing a bit more freely, oxygenating their muscle systems for action, taking their emotional system out of the fight-flight-freeze reactivity, and opening their minds to more resourceful responses rather than knee-jerk reactions. With breath awareness, clients become more adept at using verbal therapy because they notice when they begin to resist a topic or a new insight. They take cues from me about accepting this awareness as a useful tool rather than more material about which to criticize themselves. What's wrong with me? I'm not breathing properly. Here's where the therapist's unconditional positive regard and skill, when combined with breath awareness, 
provides a more powerful tool for clients than either one alone. As reinforced by contemporary research, the human brain develops in relationship to its environment and more specifically, in dyadic interactions with significant others. We are, at our core neurology, relational beings. To reprogram traumatic responses, there's no more powerful tool than dyadic interaction, which helps stabilize and calm a deregulated nervous system and restore a sense of safety in one's body. Therein lies the power of bringing breathwork into the healing relationship. So why focus on the breath in psychotherapy? To breathe is to live. How we breathe has a most profound influence on the quality of our life. Breathing correctly is the key to living fully. Most Westerners suffer from chronic improper breathing habits that are not immediately obvious. We breathe about 7 million breaths a year, and the long-term effects of poor breathing are cumulative. They reduce not only the quality of vitality in our daily experience, but can lead to a weakening of our entire system and serious health issues. We can take health for granted until we encounter serious problems. It's been estimated that 60% of all emergency transports in larger American cities involve hyperventilation or other breath-related disorders. Research suggests that 10 to 25 percent of the U.S. population suffers from breath-related illnesses every year. Improper breathing weakens and disharmonizes almost every major system in our bodies and makes us more susceptible to chronic and acute diseases of all kinds, infections, constipation, respiratory illness, digestive problems, ulcers, depression, sexual disorders, sleep disorders, fatigue, headaches, poor blood circulation, and premature aging. Many researchers believe bad breathing contributes to cancer and heart disease. Proper breathing can keep the systems of the body functioning in harmony, signal us about imbalances in our energy, and help us correct them, and thereby be a perfect companion en route to our health and happiness. Why focus on the breath's influence on physical, emotional, and psychological well-being as opposed to other physiological factors? Well, throughout history, the breath has been linked most directly to the source of our aliveness. In many languages, the word for breath and spirit are the same. When one stops breathing, the spirit or source of aliveness is said to depart. Breath is that physiological function both under autonomic and voluntary control, and as such responds to our conscious and unconscious states. Thus, breath is the aspect of life where the controlled and the uncontrolled are most evident. The more conscious we are of our breathing, the less we feel at effect of our environment. To help a client feel more moment by moment awareness of their connection to their source of life is to help them feel less victimized by life and more at one with their source. Again, most traditions that practice meditation or prayer to experience safety and connection with source, to give experiential meaning to life, start with breath awareness. Embracing a self-discovered experiential life meaning has been shown to be an essential element for health and personal fulfillment. Slower than normal breathing. This breath awareness becomes the foundation for the practice that I call maintenance breathing skills, which have been so influential for humans throughout millennia in bringing increased peace of mind and body. This is exemplified by pranayama in the yogic tradition and translated into contemporary parlance as mindfulness and coherent breathing. 
coherent breathing entails slowing the breath to five to six breaths per minute for four minutes or so. The physiological effects are well documented by heart math research for regulating the parasympathetic nervous system and lowering blood pressure. The therapist can play an instrumental role in introducing this to clients who otherwise would consider practices too esoteric or irrelevant to their lives to even attempt. It is the practical and immediately experienced effects of breath awareness that can open their minds to the benefits of additional regulatory implemented practices. Increasing awareness of their own bodies can also prepare clients for more major lifestyle renovations, such as opening up to changes in their dietary and exercise habits. Natural breathing. Ultimately, our goal in breath awareness is not to be consciously controlling our breathing every moment of the day. Breath modulation techniques are used to counter the holding patterns which impede easy flowing natural breathing and to practice maintaining that state. Breath awareness simply makes us more conscious of when the breath is not flowing easy and naturally so we can pay attention and address the signs of distress and deal with what needs to be dealt with and release what doesn't. I tell my clients when we engage in breath modulation techniques that the goal is not to look for trouble, but to experience the joy of natural breathing and being alive. If anything within my body or mind objects to my feeling in the flow, it will make itself obvious and then we'll deal with it. Faster than normal breathing and trauma recovery. Therapeutic breathwork adds to the toolbox of breath awareness and maintenance breathing by including and teaching the skills of sympathetic nervous system regulation. Through increasing the normal breathing rhythm in a safe, supportive setting for the purpose of harmonizing the emotional system, past traumas and emotional blockages can be relieved more directly than through years of beating around the bush in conventional therapy. The bush in this metaphor is an unconscious or implicit only memory that has stored emotional reactivity through trauma that gets activated by environmental stimuli and produces feelings and behaviors unaligned with current circumstances. These are labeled by most untrained observers as overreactions. In extreme cases, these reactivated memories are experienced as flashbacks, which put individuals in another time and space that feel out of their control. Healing involves relinking our emotions, sensations, and pictures with more resourceful outcomes than being frozen and self-talk that is continually negative. For example, I'm not lovable. The elegance of therapeutic breathwork is that it helps reprogram traumatic responses by going directly to the limbic system and the right brain where they are stored by using a modulated, faster than normal breathing rhythm, rather than trying to enter by the doorway of the prefrontal cortex, whose pathways to the experience have been blocked by the body's emergency control systems. As such, fears arise and are breathed through consciously and integrated. Energy thwarted by trauma and unavailable for more creative endeavors than being on continuous red alert or hypervigilant is thereby recovered. It does not anesthetize fears that might be appropriate for a person's well-being, for example, wearing a seatbelt, but it helps put the original fears in a workable context to be understood and the energy of the fear to be integrated into more conscious use. When clients learn to use this type of breathing consciously, they regain the confidence in their own abilities to handle settings and circumstances that were previously paralyzing to them. Situations as simple as having dinner with their family are as challenging as performing before a large audience. Applications in Therapy 
Many professionals have adopted breathwork to their practices. This has been particularly heartwarming to me. I highly encourage the creative adaptations of the principles and techniques of breathwork to other healing arts. I find that this adds to the power and effectiveness of both breathwork and the various healing arts to which it has been applied. The spirit of breath cannot be confined to one form or one set of techniques. It is my dream that the principles and healing power of the breath be more consciously applied to all healing arts and the mastery of everyday life. Here are just a few examples of this application. Anxiety is characterized by a diffuse fear that somatically is measured by a generalized constriction in the musculature, especially around the breathing system. The fear generated by not being able to breathe is some of the most intense and immediate fears wired in the human organism. So a generalized tension around the breathing mechanism signaling danger via the brainstem is not directly suppressible by the higher cortex functioning. In other words, we can't just talk ourselves out of it. There has to be a physiological signal to the midbrain that danger has passed for the system to relax and recover. This is regulated by the polyvagal nerve, which controls and responds directly to breathing rate and amplitude. Regulating one's breathing also changes the chemical composition of the blood and sends inhibitory messages to the brain regarding the fear response. In order to maintain this inhibitory state and for the system to reboot the polyvagal nerve must be regulated. This has two phases. The first is the breakthrough of the sympathetic emergency reaction, which can be accomplished with adaptive faster than normal breathing and sympathetic system regulation. The second phase requires ongoing maintenance, which can be accomplished through periods of slower than normal breathing. Now this often takes a number of cycles of coaching for an individual to learn self-regulation dependent on the severity of the original holding patterns or trauma. The anxious person's breathing is marked by shorter, shallower breathing. Restriction could come from holding in the abdominal area and a concentration of breath in the upper chest with the clavicles moving upwards on the inhale, or the opposite of frozenness in the chest and reverse breathing, that is the belly going in on the inhale and out on the exhale. Their experience of diffuse fear is not just in their head. Even if it started with a psychological fear, the body's resultant constriction is to avoid a real or imagined harm. This puts the organism in a vigilant, ready for fight or flight posture that reduces breathing and reinforces the experience of imminent danger that can become habitual and self-perpetuating. There are a variety of these holding patterns that develop in the early life and predispose individuals to an anxiety-prone existence. A more thorough examination of the six major themes and breathing styles developed in early life can be viewed in Breakthrough with Breathwork. Lauren is a 23-year-old single woman who has experienced anxiety since she was six years old and her parents divorced. Her breath-holding and perfectionistic attempts to control her environment peaked when she moved away from home to attend college. She was paired with a roommate from another culture whose standards of cleanliness and order were far less strict than hers. She began to experience panic and quotes, breath hunger, which brought her to seek a form of help that did not require medications. In her first session, we practiced slower than normal breathing, which brought her relief for several hours after the session. It did not last, but gave her some hope. In our second session, we introduced faster than normal breathing, which led to a breakthrough 
and anger release around her father's abandonment. Her heightened anxiety subsided for about two weeks. In our third session, we began using faster than normal breathing again, leading to another breakthrough, this time in her ability to self-regulate and become her own father. This was a beginning, not a permanent cure, which was followed up in a fourth session of faster than normal breathing, which gave her the confidence to use breath modulation techniques regularly on her own and include other homework like reparenting her quotes in her child. This was the self-empowerment she wanted and is willing to continue getting coaching and support to strengthen her confidence to breathe easier. This has included being less stressed by school and maintaining a close relationship with a boyfriend for the first time in her life. Maria is a 53-year-old married Latino woman who has had chronic anxiety most of her life. Coming from a professional family in South America, she has lived most of her adult life in the United States, marrying a very left-brain-oriented IT analyst. She has obsessive concerns about her health, but much fear about seeking treatment. She is highly sensitive, prone to frequent headaches and allergies. During the course of counseling and breathwork, she has secured employment that values both her artistic talents and cross-cultural community organizing skills. She has vastly improved her communication skills with her husband and soon to off to go to college daughter. Breathwork and body-oriented counseling worked with her need for physical expression and movement, lacking in the previous years of talk therapy she undertook. She has become safer in her body and able to follow a healthy lifestyle that reinforces her self-acceptance and pleasure in living. The tools of breath awareness and breath modulation perfectly complement an entire change in self-confidence, self-esteem, and anxiety reduction. Depression presents another face of breathing deregulation and is characterized by an overly suppressed breathing for an extended period, leading to an altered brain chemistry, which keeps the system in a different form of emergency shutdown. In this case, a suppressive holding pattern in the breathing mechanism slows down the metabolism and other bodily functions to preserve resources during periods of deprivation or being trapped. The experience of an elephant sitting on one's chest is common, as well as the psychological sense of hopelessness and helplessness. The depressed person's breathing is labored, minimal, and can appear to be a struggle to maintain survival. In the animal kingdom, these states have been induced by putting animals in conditions of painful stimulation from which they cannot escape. Their breathing and energetic functions became depressed until the situation is alleviated, at which time the organism can recover and eventually return to normal functioning. Humans can psychologically create trapped conditions in which they see no escape and give the same emergency instructions to their nervous system and bodily functions. Breathwork can be an important adjunct in the recovery process to jumpstart the energy system, which then must be maintained by providing an altered psychological and emotional framework. The adroit use of faster than normal breathing, psychological reframing, and eventually slower than normal maintenance can reduce the recovery time significantly and avert the dependency on pharmacological intervention to bring the system back to healthy self regulation and enhanced growth. Helen is a 62 year old divorced woman with chronic depression and a history of incest with an older brother. She has been prone to prolonged periods of self-isolation 
and feelings of worthlessness and hopelessness. When she began to have memories of incest surface, her husband refused to acknowledge or support her. Their divorce accentuated her withdrawal. She had experienced many forms of therapy since early childhood, but eventually dropped out of treatment of any form. She was able to hold a job and give support to her son, who was also prone to depression, and her daughter, both grown now. She sought breathwork upon recommendation of a mentor and has used once a month sessions to move stagnant, fearful energy and re stimulate her interest in life and potential dating again. Even though her son's dealing with suicidal tendencies, she's maintained her own breath awareness and modulation practices, both slower and faster than normal breathing. She has become a source of inspiration and support to others in her family and community. Addiction is an attempt on an individual's part to maintain a state of feeling good when chronically stressed by using a stimulus that becomes associated with that feeling good state and overly attached to it. This is controlled by a reward center in the brain which produces dopamine when stimulated. Once the associative connection has been made between the addictive substance and this center, repeated stimulation is reinforced independent of higher cortical mechanisms of control or suppression. Animals in the laboratory, when given the opportunity to voluntarily stimulate this appetitive center by pressing a bar connected to an electrode in their brain, will continue this activity above any other appetitive need like food and water until they die. This center is that strong in its drive for satisfactions. Humans, once the strong association has been made to that center, have a hard time, quotes, willing themselves to break the connection and to parse out more balanced and healthy forms of stimulation that integrate the needs of their entire organism and address the original stress which they had not solved with a more beneficial, balanced approach. In a sense, the period of addiction highlighted this unanswered challenge and exacerbated it to the point, sometimes life or death, where it had to be addressed and other resources brought to bear in reaching healthier solutions. Breathing patterns of people with strong addictions have been noted to be similar to those with anxiety, but perhaps more strongly entrenched. When a person's addictive substance has been ingested, the holding pattern temporarily is released, and they feel appeased. The pleasure of letting go of the institutionalized tension they carry is in itself part of the addiction cycle. Breathwork has been shown to provide that breakthrough experience, which helps disconnect the addictive substance as the only source of stress reduction and help in the process of rebuilding a more healthy, balanced, energetic approach to life. Breathwork is equipped to do more than shock the system out of the addictive cycle, but to give self-regulatory tools on the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual levels, all of which must be integrated into a new life paradigm for the recovery to be a renewal and growth to a more integrated level of functioning and fulfillment. When any of these aspects are not integrated into the recovery, relapse will continue until it is. Corrine is a 69-year-old retired art teacher who dealt with years of frustration in school systems where art programming was continually marginalized, to the point over several years during which her room was a storage closet and she had to take her supplies from classroom to classroom and school to school in a mobile cart. She developed a family pattern of alcohol use, which threatened to seriously compromise her health. She found in breathwork 
a way to address and release her stress, and also connect with like-spirited companions who appreciated and acknowledged her gifts. She used breath work on her own and with others to come back to more self-regulation and ability to set boundaries for herself with her family. She's also come home to doing art for her own fulfillment and, ironically, lives in a condominium that's a converted public school in which she has a corner apartment with sumptuous lighting for her artwork that's the former principal's office. She is now the principal of her own breath and life. Now, my 33 years of courses in integrative psychology and breathwork are available online at transformationsusa.com and through our in-person and virtual training programs. I now virtually train and teach internationally. I invite you to investigate our training programs and give yourself the opportunity to open doors to life-enhancing personal and professional growth. Our trainings are approved for professional continuing education credits in the United States through the National Board of Certified Counselors and the National Association of Alcohol and Drug Addiction Counselors. Contact us at transformationsusa.com or area code 414-351-5770. I look forward to sharing Breathwork's role as it is integrated into psychotherapy and all other healing arts or experienced on its own.